All right, we got a TH350 valve body on the bench. Uh, this is off of the uh, TH350 buildup that we're gonna do. And um, we're gonna take it down, get all the valves out, clean everything up, and then uh, we'll go ahead and reassemble this thing once the casting's all hot tanked and uh, we're ready to go with it. So one of the things I like to do before I take a valve body apart is just go through all the, val all the valves um, make sure that they're moving freely in their respective bores. Make sure nothing's getting hung up. Uh, you know, nothing's kind of seizing when it's being stroked. So this will help me understand if there's any kind of, you know, issues with uh, going back together. If I need to recondition any of the bores, uh, you know, polish the bores to get the valves to drop into, the, you know, into their uh, respective locations under their own weight. Um, that's what you want when you go back to put it together. You want to be able to, you want to be able to take the valve body, you know, hold it up vertical like this, and then drop in each valve in its respective location and have it go all the way down to where it's supposed to go. I mean, you may have to tap on it ever so slightly just to nudge it, but it, you shouldn't have to, you know, use any kind of appreciable force to get it to go back in. So... Anyway, so starting from uh, right to left, we have the boost valve, pressure regulator valve. That's this train right here. Then we have our 2-3 shift valve and 2-3 shift control valve, your 1-2 shift valve and 1-2 shift control valve, your manual low control valve, and then over here is your detent regulator valve, and then over here, this is your detent valve itself, and then of course, the manual valve. So to get these valves out, as you can see, there's roll pins here, or well, pins, they're not really roll pins, they're just regular pins. And what you need to do is you need to push in on each of the respective uh, sleeves here. So I'll start with the, um, the boost and pressure regulator. This is the uh, boost valve sleeve. You just push it in a little bit and then you kind of wrap it on the bench. Well, actually, I don't even have to do that, but um, the pin should fall right out and then the sleeve will come out. And then to get the boost valve out of the sleeve, sometimes you have to wrap that on the bench. All right, next is your pressure regulator spring. Make note that this um, end is wider than this end. The narrow end faces the pressure regulator valve. So on assembly, you will put the spring with the narrow end in first. that out of the way. All right, and if I didn't mention it, this is your 2-3 accumulator. That I take off, um, or I take this out on the press. So just Pry it out from the rear on the valve until you can expose the little slot for the, the retainer pin and then just pry it out from here. If it's real stubborn, like if you're having problems getting it out, you know, what you can do is kind of just tap on it lightly. You know, get your screwdriver in right here or something like that and then just tap on it and it'll come out. But most of the time you won't have to do that. Just grab and twist and it should come out. Okay, so this is gonna be your 2-3 your shift valve spring. Now note, the wide end faces out or faces you. The narrow end is gonna to face toward the 2-3 uh, the shift valve itself.
All right, next is gonna be the one, two shift and one, two shift control valve. Sometimes you have to jostle these back and forth. But it'll eventually get to the point where it's exposed and then you should be able to pull it out with a magnet. If not, just repeat the process until it comes out. Sometimes these transmissions will get a lot of dirt and grit in them because they've been sitting for a long time. Like if you're, you know, rebuilding a core that, you know, you don't know anything about, it's just been um, languishing somewhere or maybe it's been exposed to the elements or something. And, you know, you might have issues with getting everything out, you know, especially those pins, you know, a lot of grit will get stuck. So... Um, what I like to do is I'll take it and I'll just turn it, um, you know, to the best of my ability, push it in and then turn it a little bit or even tap it sideways, you know, with a, uh, a small hammer and a screwdriver. And sometimes that dislodges it. The other thing you could do is just shoot a whole bunch of brake cleaner in there and, um, you know, blow it out. And sometimes that will also do the trick. So here's our, um, excuse me, uh, here's our manual low control valve. So just wrap it. Now this is under spring tension, so uh, you want to have your, you know, a hand or a finger over the bore. And then just push in on it. And it should come out. If not... Just pry out from over here like all the other ones. So what I did is I pried out while I was pushing in and that popped it out. These are fairly straightforward valve bodies, as you can see, not a whole lot to them. So I'll just take right angle pliers. Um, you can compress the spring in here a little bit to make it easier, uh, but a lot of times you can just simply get it with the pliers and, um, you know, kind of compress the spring at the same time to get it, you know, get it out of the way. And then again, just be careful because this will go flying across the room if you don't have a finger on it. Yeah, your spring seat. That's, that's not going to fit. All right, so this side's empty. Now it's time to come over here and we'll take out the detent valve. And then once it's loose, you can just take it out. All right, 
so 716 bolt. And then that's what it looks like. So this is uh, dual sided. In other words, it doesn't matter which orientation it goes. And then there's the whole valve train. All right, I'm gonna go over to press and then we'll uh, collapse this piston in the spring so that we can get at this little snap ring. Okay, I've got the valve body set up in the press and as you can see, I have the um, accumulator piston and spring fully compressed into the bore so that I have access to the little snap ring here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pry to the left uh, to get this snap ring off. And sometimes I'll take a hammer and a screwdriver and I'll just kind of gently tap. To persuade it off. And if I need to come down a little bit. I could do so. And then once it's off, just release tension carefully until everything's free. So if you're interested in this press tool, this is, um, let's see, what is this thing here? It says, it's a Kentmore tool J3377 reverse servo piston apply spring compressor. I'm sorry, I, that wasn't in the view the whole time. It's a J3377 reverse servo piston apply spring compressor. So it's Kentmore. Uh, you can find these on eBay or specialty tool sites. All right, we'll get the valve body cleaned up and then we'll put it back together.